So here's the thing, though. I'm trusting that you've done your homework through chapter 16, which some of you guys have not, and that you feel comfortable. If you're not, you need to come talk with me. But we have talked a lot about probability, and we're trying to move fast, so I hope that we relatively understand this stuff. So it's 16.5? Uh, yeah, we got to wrap this up really quick. So we were talking about these right at the end of class when we finished last week. Why couldn't we use a probability model for that tax? Why could why is that different than like dropping a coin, Andrew? Because it adds uneven signs, and it doesn't have like a probability since it could actually stay on the side. Yeah. Yeah, my outcomes are not necessarily evenly likely, and actually, I could almost put money on the fact that they're not evenly likely. I would probably wager that this is more likely to happen than this, but I would need to see the tack first, because if the head of the tack was really, really heavy, then maybe this is more likely than that because this is super weighted, but we don't know. It's not fair. It's not even, so we can't use a model for that. Sean? Uh, not like a flat one like that. I have like the safety thumbtacks, um, but I mean, we could run some um, some trials at some point if we wanted to, but I mean, we already know just by looking at it, like, it'd be highly unlikely that you get even outcomes. Like, that'd be very hard. Why could we use a probability model on part B, on situation B? Um, or did we talk much about this yet? It was like, we did, we did. yeah, it was right at the end. Did we cover the bags? Nope. No. Yeah, we, you guys ended up running away here. Why were we able to use one with this? Monson? Because there's an even chance in each side to fall. Yeah, so the reason we can use this is every face is a 1 6 chance. So, thank you. That is what we call a uniform. Every potential. Now, I'm not saying yellow is equally likely to red, but every face that we're using is evenly likely and it's uniform. Questions? So when we look at the final example here, table shows data collected from cashiers in the grocery store. Write the probability model to find the probability a customer will use each type of bag. So I need you off to the side. What's the probability of plastic? What's the probability of paper? And what's the probability that they are reusing their own bag? So Sam, how do I figure out probability of plastic? When I'm doing any probability, how am I going to set this up? I need to first know my total. So do you have that yet? Jeremiah, you got it? What is it? 350? Let's go verify that. Just good, sweet, thank you. Check the verification because if I don't calculate it, one person calculated and you can make easy mistakes. By the way, guys, this is Aaron Riley Young. He is a Linworth student, just like Emily, except he actually, how, how old do you think Aaron is? Like 20. Freshman through senior year. 18. 20. 18. 17. Aaron's a sophomore, so second year of high school. He is here on interim, so he is helping instruct uh, the Math 7 class, and depending on how bold he gets by the end of the week, maybe I'll have him help. I uh, instruct you guys a little bit, but that's why he's here hanging out is some to kind of like learn a bit about teaching and pedagogy is like how teachers teach. Um, and then he's trying it out with the math seven class um, because since we already went through this stuff this year, he's able to kind of watch my videos and make sure he's ready to go and he can watch me teach you guys and then apply that to teaching the math seven class. So this is Aaron. Feel free to chat with him and uh, whatever you want. <laughs> he is a Phoenix alum, so he knows all about Phoenix. But that's why occasionally I'll look that way and explain to him why I did what I did. So, Sam, we then for plastic, 
Do 252 over 350. What'd you get for that as a decimal? It is a great question, right? Almost 25 over 35. Very close. 0 0.72. Sure. So then if I look at the probability of paper. I mish. What do I set up there for probability of paper? Like 21 over 30. Ah, 21 over 350, which actually both of those could reduce by 7 if we felt like it, but we don't have to. That comes out to be 0. Point... Compute it! 0. Yeah. 0. 0.06. 0. 0.06. And the probability that we would reuse the bag, we have 77 people that reuse, divided by 350 in total, Sean or whoever. Verified. 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 Now, 0.22. Two, two. Yeah. Yeah. What should happen over here? Awesome. If you add all of them, you get one. All of my probabilities combined need to sum to one if we've taken into account every option. So the only options at this store are you can get paper bags, plastic bags, or reuse your own. Or I guess reusing your own would also mean like if I get no bags, like I went to the store last night just to get ice cream, because it was one of those nights, and I didn't get a bag. So I would probably fall under the reuse category since I didn't use any of those. But when we look at every situation, we have to sum to one. Any questions left on probability models, when we use them, um, experimental versus theoretical? Is there a 6.6? 6. Uh, 16.6, 6. there is, and this is going to wrap our chapter just reviewing some of these ideas. There's no new homework, but a lot of you need to get your homework from chapter 16 finished up. Some of you guys are a little bit behind, so I'm aware of that. I hope that you guys are aware of that. There's no new homework. So you guys have the concepts learned. There's not always fresh homework for every single thing. Now I'm probably going to post an optional review for the chapter, but it's kind of like the same stuff, just more practice on it. So look, like be on the lookout for an optional review to get posted, but then after we take the test, I'll delete it so you guys don't have to worry about that assignment. So, man. I know some people are still working on the chapter 15 test, so that's why it is not deleted yet, but if you need to work on that, please come during AO extensions. Um, I have not started reading those yet because I knew some of you guys needed to work on that. Um, Wait, did you say, did you do the, um, you said you were going to um, work on them or something? Like you were gonna... Give some feedback? Yeah. I did not. Yeah, I looked through them, but then I decided not to mark them up. 27. Today, 27. So let's imagine that you are playing a game. Now, in this game, you use a spinner in the probability tool. So, you, like random.com, you could set up a, a spinner. So when you reach this five-way fork in a computer maze game, it's a computerized spinner, right? So you click it, it spins, randomly assigns you an outcome. Now, these are your five potential outcomes. So we want to look at, and I, I'm modifying their question a little bit, but if we just look at the probability of situations, I kind of loosely follow the notes. I don't always like, because the notes are back from Pearson. I know what I want to teach, and I use their questions. But what are the outcome possibilities here? If we look at what could happen, what might be a result, Jeremiah? Now you sound a little redundant this morning, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. So, but you're repeating yourself. Why are you repeating yourself? Because they're the same option no matter what. So, are those different options? Yeah. Are, are they different outcomes? No. No. So, are there five outcomes? No. No. There are five possible results of the spinner or whatever, but there aren't five outcomes. What's one of my outcomes? Um, dead end. 
static, we, which is really lose. Probability that we lose. What is another possible outcome, Jaslyn? That we win. Yay! <laughs> and we also have probability of Andrew. Try again. Try it again. So now, to compute these, or to determine what we expect the probability to be, if this is computerized, and if it is truly random, this should be a uniform probability model. Every wedge on the spinner should have an equal outcome. So these are like five wedges on the spinner. If, if I was using the Pearson lesson, it has like a little spinner that says like dead end, dead end. Try again, try again, and you win. So by looking at these, each having equally likely outcomes, but that's not true. gravity works. No, so imagine with me, you have a spinner with five regions. If it has five regions, then the outcome shouldn't change. Stop. You're misunderstanding me. Okay, take a step back. Like, th this is where you dance that fine line of disrespect. You're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Every wedge of the spinner has equally likely outcome. That doesn't mean each occurrence, each result, is equally likely. Okay? So, if the spinner was fair and had five wedges, these are your five wedges. So if you want to draw off to the side, I'm really bad at drawing fifths. Um, one, two, three, four, close, close. So I have lose, try again, lose, try again, and win. And the computer's like, well, yeah, spin me, I'm random. Well, it's stacked against you. What is the probability that you'll be trying again? Ashley? Yeah, two wedges out of the five, which really gives us 40%. Julian, what's the probability that we lose? So, guys, what this just told me is I have a 40% chance that I'm going to have to try again. And when I try again, I have a 40% chance that I'm going to lose or again have a 40% chance of trying again. So the probability of winning is really what's left over, or we can check the wedge and see that it's one out of five, but really our probability of winning is 20%. 20%. So we could also say... The probability of not winning, which would be a complementary situation, the inverse or the opposite of an occurrence. So if winning is 1 out of 5, my probability of not winning, yes, 4 out of 5, Jeremiah just said is 80%. So I have a 20% chance that I get to exit and I win. But I really have an 80% chance that I don't win, that I either try it again or I automatically lose. So this is like you're either trying again or automatically losing. So whether I look at each of these three, and they add up to 100%, or these two, probably of winning or just not winning, those would also add up to 100%. So if we did this 250 times, say you were really really trying at the game. How many times do you think you'd win? Let's say you're going to wager with your friend. I bet that when I play this game 250 times, I'll win. Colin? Well, once you figure out how to win, then you win, so you could just keep that. But it's, it's randomly occurring. So remember, it's, it's a random spinner. You click it, it spins, it randomly stops on somewhere. But if you do this 250 times, you already know the, the expected outcome percentages. Again, work with 10% if possible. Monica? 
How can I figure out the expected times I win? You would have to multiply the uh, 0 point zero. No, Amanda, two. you need something? What's up? Sorry. Um, it's like you get the yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, oh. So if so during testing, we can't give you guys mints or anything. Apparently, there is. It kind of falls under that whole category. We can't give you Clorox wipes anymore. Sorry, not our decisions. Um, so if you have a snack or whatever that you want to go get, feel free to go get it now and eat. Good lord. <laughs> uh, so we'll pause class for two minutes. Yeah, we'll we'll pause class for a couple minutes. Yeah, I, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. The manipulation of 10%, that would be easier. So 20% is just double 10%. And if I want to find 10% of 250, move your decimal one place. So if I move my decimal one place, 10% would be 25. So 20% would be... 50, thank you, that gave me a uh, heart attack there. What about 40%? 100. And trying again is also 100. And guys, this isn't that uncommon from games that you play. If outcomes are randomly occurring, you easily winning is not that fun. And it's not good for like if, especially if the game has advertisements and it wants you to play a lot, if every time you lose or every time you try again, it puts up an ad, and that's money that they're making from you viewing the ad, even if you immediately click the X and close it, they made money. So, when you start playing games, you realize that every game is designed with probability in mind, whether it's random probability or strategic probability, like outcomes are based on things. Yeah, shoot some money. So, check this out. Basketball team has two sixth graders, five seventh graders, three eighth graders. Each day the coach selects one team member or one team member at random to put the stuff away. How can you assign the numbered sectors of the spinner so the spinner can be used to simulate this situation? So, assign two to represent sixth graders, assign five to represent seventh graders, and three to represent eighth graders. Hmm? So literally, they're saying that's our sixth graders, that's our seventh graders, and oh, that's one. That. Sorry, What's the point of doing it like that? What's the point of doing it like that? What about the rest of them? I've been seeing the words. So remember, all we're doing is picking somebody to put away the equipment. But does this give every person an even chance of the outcome? No. Uh, the grade. Whoever made up option one totally misunderstands what the question is saying. This is a complete misunderstanding. We want a quantity of two to be sixth graders because there are two of them. We want a quantity of three, but they interpreted it as the number. So this, you could just really cross out. It's totally malarkey. It's trash. So now let's try assign zero and one to represent sixth graders. Okay, so these are sixth graders. Assign two, three, four, five, six for seventh graders. So here's your seventh graders. And seven, eight, nine for eighth graders. Is it, yeah, so. If each of those numbers is a team player, like a, a member, and whoever it lands on, they pick up the gear, is that evenly distributed? Did we cover all players? Yeah. Yeah, because we have two sixth graders, five seventh, and three eighth graders. Does every outcome, like each person, have an even chance? I think so. Yeah. 
Well, if if I am zero, you are one, and then two, three, four, five, six. Like if each person's oh. a number, yep. then yeah, every person has an even outcome. Now, what's the difference between two and three? So, take a second. Just look at it and think. Ellie, what do you think? Three evenly equal. What do you mean? Okay, so they're not all grouped together, so that if it doesn't land on, like, say it lands on, or two, say it lands on um, one of the closest, it, uh, it still doesn't narrow down the chances of the of the demonstrators, um, but it makes it more fair to the other people. And it Why? Because then they don't have to be... Because if it's Finn and the majority is on um, two to sit, then that would be unfair because it's on the other side of the board. Ooh. And Who watches Wheel of Fortune? Sometimes. Sometimes. Everybody. It's America's I mean, Game I mean, Show. I mean, I mean, I mean. That's what they call it, right? America's Game Show, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, boy. So the wheel. Yeah. Right? Michelle, let's do this really quick. Um, this is going to be dangerous. Well, no, I have my email open, so I just need to open a new tab. Whenever you're recording your screen, never open your email, because then it's in the video. So, here's the Wheel of Fortune wheel. Anyone notice anything interesting about this? There are some skulls that are smaller than others. Yeah, the big jets. So I'm not saying colors. No, there's... Wait, there are already... Is this a lot of things? Your big jackpots. What's right next to your big jackpots? Big jackpots. Bankruptcy. What's right next to the other bankrupts? Well, here's a bankrupt, and then there's big money. Right next to it, but the bankrupts is right in the middle. Um... Half of a car is really pointless unless you're going to get the other half of the car, which is really, really hard to do. Because notice, they're like on opposite sides here. I'm not, sometimes they have like prize packages and different trips and things, so that would probably be like this prize wedge. But notice, if they lumped all the bankruptcies together and lumped all the big prizes together, I could strategically spin with a certain amount of force to try to get the wheel to land where I want it to. But by evenly distributing your values around the wheel, if I'm sitting here and I go to spin it and I want a big money value, well, I, well, I've got a big money value here, I've got a big money value here and here and over there and over there and over there and over, like, they're all spread out. So while, uh, where are we at? While two and three really are the same probability-wise, three is more fair because it spreads out the outcomes and mixes them. So please, on your paper, notate somehow that three is most fair because it mixes the outcomes. And actually, if you actually watch Wheel of Fortune, there are some people that can spin very well. Yep. Like, they have figured out the physics, and it would probably only take a few spins to kind of get your guess. But if you just always get up there and you're like, all right, let's run as fast as I can. Like, that's yeah. pointless. Oh, you want to have a little bit of strategy and say, okay, if I'm trying to land on that guy, I want to spin it just about, like, and they, you can watch some of them yeah, have strategy. Cool. Other ones just... Spin as fast as you can. Some guys are really like counting how many spaces they get and everything else. And um, oh, show that Drew Carey took over. Bob Barker. He's, come on. Um, it's on in the morning. No, when you're sick, you. Good morning, America. Oh, come on, you guys. <laughs> you don't even know Bob Barker. Price is Right. Price is Right has the giant wheel. I've never watched that. Same thing with the giant wheel. It's got all their values mixed up together. Right next to the one dollar is like five cents. Because if you're shooting for the one dollar and you miss it, huh, there's a nickel. 
Like, in order, you're trying to get as close to a dollar as possible. So that's most fair. Even though two and three are the same probability-wise, three is most fair because it mixes up the outcomes. Yay. I want to hit it. All right. So city planners. City planners are very important. Um, Columbus is actually very poorly designed, if you want to know for real. Um, our roadway system is not good enough to support our population growth that we've taken on. So that's why we're always doing construction. That's why, like, no matter where you drive around town, you're going to see construction because they're always having to expand things and make them bigger. We did not plan accordingly. So if you want a potential important job, go into city planning. So a city planner collected the data during three one-hour periods. So this is back to our traffic light question from last week. This person literally stands at the traffic light and documents that this is for real. This actually happens. Is that a good so, job? It, it is a When I say this is real, yes, I'm not lying. This is a real job. Because they then are going to use this data to write an algorithm, and that algorithm is going to determine when the stoplight changes color, which determines how fast you get to work once you have the job. So Here's the question. If the probability of turning left is greater than 50%, then they think that a stoplight should be installed. If the probability of turning left is less than 50%, eh, stop signs are okay, the traffic can manage itself. Because there really is a mathematical difference between how traffic can flow through stop signs and how traffic can flow through a stoplight. Sometimes stop signs are better. Sometimes stop lights are better. And they don't do it to be evil and make your drive take a long time. City planners try to strategically make your drive as efficient as possible. So, what do you think? Take a moment to analyze the data. If you were the city planner, what would you think based off this data? Or if you were the person that got the data from the city planner, like they brought it to you and they say, okay, here boss, here's your data. We could shorten and just say P of L for probability of turning left. Because I've already talked to people a bunch. I want to make skip cards. So Noah, if I look at the morning rush. And actually, this city planner conveniently collected very nice data. How many cars total were there in the morning section? Sorry, yeah, I had said no. A hundred, right? So this city planner got really lucky. In that hour, there were a hundred cars. So what's our probability of turning left? Oh, is it 110? Oh, I forgot to carry my one. Sorry, it's 110. Still nice to work with, though. How many left? 38 over my total of 110. So we know that's going to be under 38% since my total is bigger. So this comes out to be what, like 36? 34. Come on, let's see. What is it? 0 0.345. Ah, so that would round up. All right. In the morning, do we need a stoplight? Yes. No. 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 Is the probability of left greater than 50%? No. No. So, according to the morning rush, nah, we're fine. Noon rush, lunchtime. So, at the noon rush, Ozzy, how many total were here? Um, 101. Now, really, we could just approximate this to 50%, because we know that one probably won't change much. But if you did the actual math, what'd you get? 0.514. Uh, 0 0.514. So, 0 .514. so it actually comes out to be 51 rounded, because if that's 514. So at noon, do we need a stoplight? No. Uh, just barely. 
right? This probability is higher than 50%. And they said if the probability of turning left is higher than 50%, we should install a light. So, okay, in the morning we don't need one. At noon, ah, we could use one. So let's check out the evening rush. So, Mr. Smith, evening rush, what's probability of left? Give me the fraction. How many people turn left? Out of how many total? 59. So this, 0 0.42, so approximately 42%. Ah, so Andrew was looking at this data and he was like, you know what, we've got some conflicting information. I've got a yes and I've got a couple no's. What if we merge all our data together and look at at all times? Now, of course, we would love it if we had data from the entire day, but if this is all the data we have, we've got morning, we got noon, we got evening. So, Andrew, did you figure out our total total? So, our total total is 270. What's our left total? Our left total is 116. And if we compute that. That gives us like 50, uh, 42, 40, 40, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. do we need a light? No. According to the fact that we had two no's compared to one yes, and the yes was barely a yes. Now, if this yes was like 80% or 90%, like at noon, there's lots of cars turning left, what might they decide to do? Yeah, let's Ozzie? Oh, wait, never mind. Stop sign? They've already got stop signs, right? Possible. You can't just have an intersection with no traffic control. Dom? Do you have your license yet? What is that meant? I've already gone through the class. Flashing light. Whoa. Say it louder. What do they do? Flashing light. They do yellow and red. Red stop, yellow, go with caution. They write an algorithm. They say, okay, between 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon, or some like they'll open the range up a little bit wider, the light will be in operation, actually changing. And the rest of the time, it'll just blink. A blinking red light is a stop sign. Seriously, when you get to a traffic light and it's blinking red, what it means is stop like it's a stop sign. A blinking yellow light means you can go through me with caution. So just like what Aaron said. So they would just write an algorithm to be strategic about when the light operates and when it doesn't. Town I'm from, 9 o'clock at night. Literally, well, some nights, 10 o'clock. All the lights, all the lights in the town go to blinking red or blinking yellow. So I can cruise down the main strip in Coshocton and never stop at a stoplight because they're all blinking yellow. Because it's late at night and nobody drives around. People are going to do that here too. It's against the law. Yeah, I, did I talk about that with you guys yeah. last time? Yeah. Where you can go through a red light? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, I brought that up and they were like, what? You can go through a red light? Uh, you have to stop at it first. Look both ways. Make sure there's no traffic. You have to have been waiting for like 30 seconds or a minute or something. Like there's a lot of things to the law. And it's got to be a certain time at night. Like, it's, it's got to not be, like, middle of the day. Yeah, people are going to hear that. Yeah, so people need to read the law. Ozzy? Um, in Warsaw, there's only, like, one stoplight there. It's yeah. It's blinking red the whole time. Yeah, there's some towns where literally the stoplight, all it does is blink. Like, which then you're like, why don't you just put a stop sign? Sometimes they do that so that it's a light and not just a sign. So if you're coming up in the middle of the night, you see the light as opposed to you might miss the sign. Well, don't they put the light bulb in the uh, so where he's talking about, they probably don't have the funding to do that. No. Warsaw does have some of the best ice cream, though. Yeah. Oh, Earl's is open now, too. I almost got Earl's this weekend while I was home. Wait, back in Warsaw? Earl's is in Coshocton. It's like the place in Warsaw. The place in Warsaw, their ice cream hut place, is kind of like Earl's in Coshocton. Like, they're the same. All right, try this.
Each day, a bicycle manufacturer tests the brakes on a random sample of 50 bikes. If you're making something, you got to be testing it as it comes off the line. Figure out if I have defects happening. So you want to buy a bike from this manufacturer only if the probability of defect is less than 5%. So look at each of their days. Should we buy a bike from this manufacturer? Now, hold on. Let's think about this strategically. We're, we're, and this is why there's not homework from this. This is more like your understanding and your interpretation of being able to work with this stuff. Would I want to narrow focus and look at one day's defects or broad focus and look at whole range defects? Range. Why? Um, Different uh, abilities, there. and then you have like the outside. There were zero issues on Wednesday, and there were four issues on Thursday. You know, it could have happened on Thursday. Jeremy had the day off. He's the guy that does the breaks. Nobody was here to fix those issues, and they ended up making it to the end of the line. Defective. On Wednesday, Jeremy was working. He caught all the issues, and he fixed it before it got to the end of the line. Who knows what happened? But there can be variances day to day that looking at only one day would be a very narrow focus. So in a situation like this, it would be better to broad focus and look at everything overall, which is kind of like looking at the average situation. So, if I compute all of their defects, well, how many defects did they have for the week? Ten. Ten. How many bikes did they check in the week, Ellie? They had 50, and then what percentage of defects? They did have 50, a random sample of 50 bikes. Yeah, it says 50 each day. Oh, each day. Okay. Ah, careful reading. So, I love that you did that, actually. I, lo I love that that just happened. Ellie did a great job. We planned this before class. Totally. Ellie did a great job of showing how you can quickly grab the wrong number. It said a sample of 50. But that was every day had a sample of 50. So how many days do we have here? Five. So we will really have 250. So it's 125. Yeah, so if I chop the zeros off, it's 1 25th, or if I compute that up to 100, it'd be 4 over 100. So that is an, on average, a 4% defect. Now, if we look only at Thursday, though, 4 out of 50, yeah, this would be 8%. That would have been a bad day to buy a bike. I would not have wanted to buy a bike there on Thursday. But I don't want to only look at Thursday, because maybe something happened. There was an issue in the factory that day. I have a thought on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, if that you knew that, right? But we, don't, we only know this data after the day already happened. So that's the problem. But on average, they have 4% defects. And honestly, just buy a bike protection plan. If you're buying a nice bike, just buy a warranty or a protection plan. i got to take my bike in to get it tuned up. Just like a what? A meter. Just a meter. Guitar. Oh. Oh, I like it. Uh, get it tuned up. See, these kids are caught on my sense of humor. Aaron was always great at rolling his eyes and sighing at me. All right, check this out. A dog litter of six puppies has three black, two brown, and one white. Circle how... We could assign the faces on a number cube to simulate randomly selecting a certain puppy. So who said it's going to be C? So Mr. Hoover, when we look at C, it assigns one to black, like face one to black, face three to brown and face five to white on two, four, six, you roll again. 
Does that represent the probabilities to match my situation? No. No, because this would give black a one-sixth chance. This would give brown a one-sixth chance and give white a one-sixth chance, which is not true. According to the data that I have, black's got the highest chance, brown has the next chance, and white has the next chance. So C is right out. So A says assign 1 and 2 to black, 3 and 4 to brown, 5 and 6 to white. Just split them up. Black, brown, white, give them both 2. No, because that's, they still have an equal chance. So then they all have a what chance? Equal. What would it be? What would their chance be? Uh, 2 out of 6. Which, which is it? 1 third. So then they'd all have a 1 third chance, which is not true according to our data. And again, throw it out. B is the only option that makes sense. And with that, we will just wrap it for today because I want to get you guys on to testing. Good luck. You guys are going to do great. You are totally